Hi everyone, I'm TSW and in this video I'm going to be going through all of the trash and a brief overview of the bosses for Black Temple and Hyjal. So it's going to be a long video, I'll try and be as brief as I can, go through it quickly, but also get all the useful information addressed. So starting off with Black Temple, again including the trash and a brief overview of the bosses, and then go into Hyjal. So we have some Aqueous spawns here. You can just grab them and kill them. You do want to be killing them, particularly on the next few trash packs uh, when you are pulling them with the big guys, the Aqueous Lords. The Aqueous Lords have a frontal cone like wave, so you want to face them away. Similarly, the Call Scar Sea Callers here want to be faced away. So everything in this pack face away from the raid because of the Fork Lightning from the Sea Callers and the, um, the Typhoon looking thing like the wave from the Aquas Lord. You also want to make sure that you are killing the small uh, mobs, the small elementals, because they will um, increase the damage of the Aquas Lord as well as heal him a little bit. So if anyone pulls aggro of these Aquas spawns, they do spawn throughout the uh, the time of the Aquas Lord being active, as well as they're being patrolling uh, spawns around the room. So just drag them into the Paladin's Consecration and you will be fine. So fast forward, you go up the ramp. If you hug the right hand side, you can skip all of this trash. Up to this point, you can start the raid here if you want to. You can skip everything up to this point. So this is the first mandatory pack. We have Coil Scar Wranglers. These are immune to taunt. Let me look at the spreadsheet as well, just so you can follow along as well. So this will be tarted up a little bit more. Uh, this is just a rough outline just to get this video out there. So I'll do a bit more tinkering to this to make it a little bit nicer. But basically we've got the um, Aquas Spawns that I spoke about, the uh, Aquas Lord, the big guys, the Sea Callers, which I mentioned, all of this face away from the raid. And then this pack, we have the Leviathan, the big guy, and the Call Scar Wranglers. So let's go back to the video feed. So again, you can watch uh, along or follow the spreadsheet and watch along as well just so you can um, see what's going on and uh, stay tuned you know see what's going on right okay so the skull uh, so I'm just explaining what's going on here can we fast forward to the pull so I'm on the leviathan I face it away it has a tail whip it has a spit the spit is on a random raid member so he will turn from time to time and in the background you have the call scar wranglers which are taunt immune and they have a cleave Okay, so pushing along further, it's the same mobs we've had before. Aqueous Lords and the Aqueous Spawns. Face everything away, again, with the Coil Fang Sea Callers. So again, another pack. Just face these guys away. The Leviathan will face the raid to spit. He'll target a random player and to his frontal cone. This uh, next pack is a bit sketchy. I'll show you how not to do it. So you want to line of sight these mobs. This is not how you do it because this is not being line of sighted. So let's fast forward to when they're being line of sighted and you'll see it's much cleaner. So we're just going to fast forward a bit more. Sorry this is so on the fly, but obviously launch of tier 6 is very soon and I don't have time to do a fully edited uh, version. But I, I will be doing more edited versions going forward and for like GDKPs and stuff, like smooth raids. I will show you examples of that and uh, how we uh, go about doing that in the future. So we line of sight here and these ads will do a sludge nova that will do AoE and they do AoE when they die. Um, you can see these uh, casters in the back are avoiding all of the AoE and it's just melee. This is a great time to use your grenades, sappers, war stomp, everything like that. It's really nice. And you see how much more cleanly it was done. Okay. Oh, let's fast forward. We have this. This can be a bit of a scary looking pack, but it's really not that difficult. None of the trash in Black Temple is particularly difficult. We have the Sooth Slayers. We have the Generals. We have the Dragon Turtle. Now, it won't always be a turtle. Sometimes it'll be another mob. I can't remember what it is, but it's like RNG as to which one you get. You can sleep the turtle. You can sheep everything, I think. Uh, the Core Scar um, generals will enrage and make the beast, the turtle in this case, immune to CC. The turtle will, will also fixate on somebody. But again, it's not that big of a deal. Face everything away from the raid once more. The generals do have quite a fast attack speed, but uh, they dual wield, so they have quite a high miss chance. You can see what we're doing here, just facing everything away. You can stack it all and AoE it down. Just make sure you have tanks picking up each of the mobs so your paladin doesn't just have everything. We have more Aquas Lords. Face them both away from the raid. Skull and Cross kill Skull first. Um, they will spawn the Aquas Spawns, the small elementals. Just get them in a consecration behind the mobs and uh, cleave them down. Okay, so a very brief overview of the boss. Let's just fast forward whilst I did the tactics on the PTR run. You basically just want to be spread out because he'll be doing AoE targeted on a random player. 
and if you're stood next to that player you'll take the splash damage so spread out spread out 360 around the boss because there's there's no cleave there's no um craziness going on it's just damage taken by being stood next to the players and here you can see he's thrown his uh, spine this person is taking damage whilst they have the spine someone's going to walk over and click it they'll loot the spine hopefully it's done quicker than this now he's got his immune shield this person will throw the spine in their inventory and it breaks the spine you want to make sure the whole raid is full hp virtually because the whole raid takes eight and a half thousand frost damage so you want to make sure that everyone's healed up and then it just rinse and repeat i do have a more in-depth nergentis video on my youtube channel I'll link it in the description or you can find it on my channel. Moving up into Supremus Room, we have the Taskmaster. Let's just briefly have a quick look at the spreadsheet. So we've done the Gentus here and now we're on this section of the spreadsheet. So again, if you're following along, you can have a look at the highlighted area now. So the uh, Taskmaster will eventually enrage all of his little ads, but he does it so late into combat that he's usually dead by the time it happens. We also have, so I pulled these in the sky just because it's PTR to test them out. These Dragon Score Wind Reavers, these can be kited by your ranged and just kite them away. They will land on the ground. We managed to reset them here. That wouldn't really happen in, in uh, reality. You can also skip all of this area besides the first pack that we just pulled with the mobs that will eventually be enraged. You can hug the right hand side and skip these, but you can kill them as well for rep if you're wanting to get your shadow res uh, gear crafted or for the heart of darknesses. Again, if you want shadow res gear crafted, um, you can free action potion and be immune to the stun by the fear bringers. They have a frontal cone as well and a rain of fire on a random raid member. I think we do end up wiping here because we're pulling loads of mobs. Let's just fast forward. Okay, so let's just go back to when we're doing a pull. So this is a fresh pull. So these worm crawlers will pull down these flying NPCs. So these worm, uh, these dragon more worm crawlers have a cleave. So face them away. They have a. I'm not sure if they have a focus. I think they're meant to have a focus, um, but I don't think they do have a focus on PTR. Uh, again, these dragon more sky stalkers can be kited down. So if you have aggro, these say you're a warlock or a hunter, just kite them away. And when they travel, they will go towards the ground and land. So melee can attack them. In the meantime, melee can attack the worm callers, which are melee mobs. Fairly straightforward. And we're going to go to the other side. And again, this is another Fearbringer. I'll show you a full Fearbringer fight. So we grab the Fearbringer. The pull range on Supremus, the boss in the background, is he has quite a small pull range. So don't worry too much about pulling him. So face this Illidari Fearbringer away from the raid. The tank needs to do quite a bit of threat because of the stun. And dots will obviously be continuing to tick and dealing threat. So he's going to stun the raid. He's going to use his flame breath. Obviously make sure it's faced away from the raid. And you can see the rain of fire in the background. You can preemptively spread as ranged. Ideally the whole raid isn't hit by that. And again another taskmaster like when we first entered this outdoors area. Kill the taskmaster. He'll enrage. He'll enrage his adds but he dies very very quickly. And again for safety we're killing these worm callers as well. Again, pulling these worm callers will pull the ads in the sky, kite these away or just move them uh, and they'll fly down to the ground and be hit, uh, targetable or hittable by the melee. So we're going to do uh, Supremus now. I'm just going over tactics quickly. So I'll just fast forward through all of this. Again, apologies, this isn't a more edited video. Um, I would always suggest until I see otherwise, you want to use three tanks for this fight. So it's similar to patchwork. Um, Essentially, he'll do his hate, uh, his hateful strike on the uh, person with the highest HP who isn't the current main tank, okay, or his current target. Um, but he can hateful strike quite quickly in quick succession. So you, having that third tank there means that he should never hateful strike a melee DPS. And he can very easily attack and hateful and one shot the melee DPS. So having three tanks really uh, removes that possibility. So I would definitely recommend it. If you've got a feral druid, say you've got like, I don't know, two ferals and a paladin or warrior, pala, feral, your feral, need, there's no cat form here. Go bear form, please, in phase one. And you will like just do it the first few times. Did you take a hateful or dodge a hateful? Yes, great. You should have been in bear form. Great, because you survived. If you're in cat form or anyone else, would have died okay after 60 seconds because it's a 60 second per phase he goes into the kiting phase 
This is the difficult phase because people get greedy. If you want to play it safe, literally just run around in a big circle. Clear all the trash and run around in a big circle. If you're moving um, and the volcano spawns underneath you, you're already moving. You're already five yards away from it by the time you've even noticed that it's spawned on you. These volcanoes do insane damage. It's like 3k every second. So you will die in three seconds if you do not move straight away. If you um, have the volcano spawn on you, obviously the volcano is centered on you. You have to move quite a large distance in order to stop getting volcano damage. You will die. And the best thing about running around the outside of this area and keeping the inside clear of players is there will be no volcano spawning because they only spawn on players. So that after 60 seconds is up and there's a threat wipe, the middle of the room is clear. You can see here it's a fiesta. We have volcanoes, we have people trying to heal, we have tanks trying to pick up the, the boss. It's not going very cleanly. But if you just run around in phase two, you don't worry about trying to be number one damage. You can get through it relatively cleanly. And then threat reset, pick it up. There are no volcanoes in the middle. The middle is, is, is the safe zone. Okay, so that's Supremus in a nutshell. Let's fast forward. Now, there are two... Th this is a bit messy on the video, I'm afraid. So these mobs are a little bit tricky. Let's pause this a second and reference the spreadsheet. So let's close this quickly. So these are the mobs after Supremus. We have the Illidari Centurion. The, these need to be faced away from the raid. They have a sonic strike, which I think uh, silences. So it's similar to the mobs in SSC. Um, before you get to Hydros, the platforms between the lift and the boss Hydros. They also have a cleave, so face them away for two reasons. We have the Heartseeker, which has a rapid shot. It doesn't hit for much damage at all, but face it away from the raid and the raid won't be hit by it. We have the Defilers. These are... Um, they have a Banish and a Reign of Fire. And we have the Bone Slicer, which has a gouge. Now, the gouge can be particularly um, bad because it's going to gouge the tank. The, the tank is CC'd and second on threat is now tanking the Bone Slicer. Okay. So that's these mobs here. Let's uh, go back to the raid footage and we can see what's happening here. I think I spent a bit of time explaining what's going on. Let's just keep jumping further and further. I do think we end up wiping because someone pulls the pack on the left. This pack on the right should just be pulled on its own. Everyone hug the right hand side. You can you don't have to kill the Centurion first. You can just tank these and kill the others. It's up to you. Killing the Bone Slicer first can be good because it gets rid of the gouge. You know, he won't gouge on the pull. Okay. And you can banish these. They're very easily banished. And just pick them up one by one. Uh, kill them down one by one. It's fairly straightforward. The, the most difficult thing I'd say is the gouge on the tank, just because he's not tanking the mob anymore. So I think for safety's sake, we do pull this pack. Again, This these, these mobs are actually optional because what you can do is um, talk to the NPC at the beginning of the instance and teleport later on, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, there's a wolf here, which has an insane pull range. Um... Is it the Ashtung Spirit? Is that what it's called? The dog. So you see here that this dog on the very left-hand side of the screen has pulled. It has an insane aggro range. I'm not aware of this at this point. I'm, I'm thinking we're skipping. Nope. So it's the, uh, yeah, the Ashtung uh, Feral Spirit. I've not actually got it on my spreadsheet, but I'll add it on. So when you guys see it, hopefully there's an Ashtung Spirit in here. And I'll mention the insanely large range. But I think we end up wiping here just because... Uh, yeah, we pull a patrol as well. One thing that's also really good that I'll show you, actually, I'll link this in the in the description as well, is a Cosmophile who was with me in a lot of the um, PTR runs that I ended up doing. Uh, he's got this really cool spreadsheet he's put together. I'll link this as well. And uh, he's got some really nice pathing um, routes for all of the mobs. If we scroll down here, you can see this r red dotted curvy line. This is this Illidari Night Lord pack. Now, we'll do a Night Lord pack later, um, but yeah, we end up pulling two packs. One pack because of the insane range of the Feral Spirit, and uh, we yeah, we just further struggle because we pulled an Illidari Night Lord pack, which is this red one uh, pathing here and also at the top of this room. So we're here. Well, no, we, we've tried to run here towards uh, Akama's room. Okay, let's go back to the uh, stream footage, and we're wiping here. So we can just fast forward 
and I'll explain the mechanics or the um, abilities. Okay, so what we do here, after you kill Supremus and you run through the entrance of the uh, raid, we've, I've just walked through the entrance of Black Temple, and on your left, there is the teleport NPC. Now, after Supremus, he will teleport you to where I get teleported to. This is take me to the other Deathsworn Olam. Okay. So I mark him with skull so everyone knows who I'm talking about. I'll talk to him myself and get teleported. There, this is where the uh, quartermaster for the Black Temple rep is, as well as regent vendor and repair. So make sure everyone knows that there's a repair here and you can uh, replenish your regents and yeah, get your gear fixed. Okay, so now let's, let me go back to Cosmophiles. Amazing spreadsheet. So we were coming in here from Supremus and killing this pack and we tried to come around the corner and we pulled this pack. Uh, what we've now done is wiped and then we have teleported here. So now we're going to go this way down into Shade of a Karma's room. So we're just going to wait for everyone to get buffed, to get some, uh, you know, food buff, whatever. There are some stealth mobs as well. You'll see them here. Here are stealth mobs. The Ash Tongue Stalkers. Very straightforward if you're just pulling these two on their own. You'll learn where the stealth mobs are. They're fairly easy. Like, they don't patrol or anything. Um, but speaking of patrol, this patrol does keep walking around. Again, we can go to the Cosmophile spreadsheet where he's very nicely illustrated the pathing of this pack on the right and then there's another pack on the left so again let's jump back to the raid footage and this patrol has just come in to us okay so let's look at my spreadsheet quickly and just go over what these mobs do in this pack we have a battle lord mystic and primalist so the battle lord so we are battle lord has a cleave the mystic has a bloodlust and totems Ah, something that's very different from its private servers is the totems. Um, the mystic will drop a wind fury, which I wouldn't say is particularly deadly. You don't really notice uh, the damage too much from the battle lords, which benefit most from the bloodlust. Sorry, from the um, the wind fury. Um, but they also summon a elemental totem, which summons a air elemental, and the air elemental will cyclone people. And that can be problematic, particularly if they cyclone a tank. I'm not sure if I ever got cycloned by the air elemental, but the air totem will summon an air elemental and players can get cycloned. If you have two of your healers cycloned, you're going to have a bad time. If you have two of your tanks cycloned, you're going to have a bad time. So the primary focus, I'd say, is the totems and the mystics. And be a little bit dangerous as, as well but again it's just three mobs and the two stealth mobs it's not too bad this is a pug by the way the footage that you're seeing so we're killing the second patrol we, we've managed to pull the uh, stealth mobs as well so you'll see stealth mobs pulled as well as we're pulling the pack so this is two packs five mobs total the stalkers don't do too much um i don't seem to have them written on my spreadsheet they're just stealth mobs they're very straightforward their biggest gimmick is the fact that they're stealthed. Okay, now we have the Illidari Night Lord. Oh, oh, there are two more stealth mobs here. Sorry if I'm fast forwarding and going back and forth a bit quickly, but I can't have this video take six hours, I'm afraid. Uh, so these are the Ashton Stalkers. These are the stealth mobs. They're very straightforward, as you can see. Tank and spank, easy peasy. Okay, so the Illidari Night Lord. We can hop back to my spreadsheet. This is the Illidari Night Lord pack. We have the Illidari Night Lord themselves, and they're going to have two adds, a Heartseeker and a Bone Slicer. The Illidari Night Lord himself is the problematic mob. You want to fear ward the tank because the Illidari Night Lord will fear. He doesn't have a set timer for when he fears. Sometimes it will be towards the beginning of combat. Sometimes he'll delay it and you'll kill it, kill the Night Lord before he even casts his fear. So, you know, you might get it, you might not. You probably will get the fear though. But it's really clutch if the tank doesn't get feared because the guy, the uh, the, Ill the Illidari Night Lord won't move. Slow traps can be good because adds will be summoned. And we, we hopefully will see that in a second. So you fast forward, we can banish the adds, you can tank them. Obviously it's a lot safer if you're banishing the adds. Oh, do we end up killing him without any adds? Okay, well that's a poor example. But um, get some slows down or just use trinkets and cooldowns and kill it. And like we had there, you have no adds. 
that we got quite lucky there. You don't always get that lucky. Okay, so this is another pack with a Feral Spirit. The Feral Spirit here in the top right has an insane pull range. As like I'm trying to pull these this pack on the left. And then, oh, look, look, the Ashtung Feral Spirits found me because of its insane threat range. Okay, so it's, this is another pack that we've seen before. Oh, look, it's the Storm Fury. This is the air elemental that is summoned by the Ashtung Mystic. So this Storm Fury doesn't get killed because this is the first time we've been here and it's a pug. So this um, Storm Fury is going to cyclone people in the raid. I don't know if I can clearly show on footage anyone being cycloned, but as you can imagine, it's not a great time. We also have the Wind Fury totem here that's just spawned as well. The Mystic will also do a Chain Lightning, and as we see here, a Chain Heal. So the Mystic has an annoying totem that spawns and heals um, all of their NPCs and also Chain Lightnings us. So the Storm Fury is there. I think the Storm Fury also does this AoE as well. There's no way that that's our AoE on the raid. So yeah, not particularly pleasant, but we get through it okay. This is really gnarly because very little assignments, no CC. Um, you can CC all of these mobs as well, I believe. Let me just check my reference. Yeah, you can uh, shoot the mystics and uh, yeah, you don't really need to shoot m much else really. Um, they're not, it looks awful in this footage, but you know, 90% of the, the, the gills watching this video will be doing it better than this, I'm sure. Okay, so we have another pack where we have Heartseeker face away from the raid. We have the Centurions facing away from the raid. And uh, we have the, which is the one that does the gouge, the Bone Slicer, which does the gouge. So all you need to think about here is keep the Heartseeker facing away. Keep the Centurions, most importantly, faced away. And then we have the Bone Slicer, which will do the gouge on the tank. So you can just use a rank to banish. And then if you have a good DPS, like we did enough at least in this raid is just do a rank to banish. We we pull and you don't re-banish because you kill off enough of the mobs. Like the Centurions will be dead by the time the rank to banish is about finished. And if you're tanking Skull as a Centurion, you just pick up the banish which ended. It lines up quite nicely. Okay, so now we're on our way to Shade of Akama's room third boss and check out the pull range i'm just walking in do not speak to a karma you will start the karma encounter see i've already pulled this ashton fell spirit because the pull range is insane um we have new mobs here we have ashton primalist these are hunters they will root your tank and um yeah it's not that big of a deal like here i am rooted it's like a wing clip icon again we're just doing these body pulls. It's not going well and we're not wiping. This is incredibly easy, okay? Just have your uh, tanks taunt a mob or two off the paladin and the paladin can tank everything, okay? If your paladin is getting scared, just iron shield potion. Bring plenty of iron shield potions and you can just tank the damage. Here are two primalists. They'll root the tanks, but it's nothing to, to worry about really. Now we have the Ashton Mystic. We're killing the Ashton Mystic first. We're pulling them all back. To be safe you don't really have to pull them back and just watch out for the cleave we lose a couple of people but again it's nothing too bad at all you can still uh, you can sheep these mobs as well if you want to but i wouldn't recommend it generally okay so now we're, i'm explaining some shade of a karma tactics there are two sides of shade of a karma's room a little um, archway here where mobs will spawn this is the west side and this is where you have two kinds of mobs. You have the mobs that spawn in threes, which are easy. And then you have the, I can't remember what they're called, sorry, the mobs with the red shoulder pads. These are the mobs which hit hard. And uh, they only spawn on PTR from this west archway, okay? So whoever's tanking this side, I would recommend having two tanks here and then one tank on the east side. So you have your paladin tanking this side, for example and your feral picking up the uh, the single mob with the red with the red shoulder pads on it's fairly obvious uh, when they're spawning also there'll be uh, one mob that spawns at a time which will run straight up to uh, the staircase which hopefully you'll see in a sec so this staircase so if you're dps you ignore these ads spawning from this archway this is just a tank and healer exercise all of the dps will just kill these ads channeling a karma at the top of the staircase what you can do is 
save one of the trash mobs from this room and just drag it up here start the uh, encounter and seed off the one trash mob you, you were saved and kill all those mobs with seed of corruption from warlocks additionally you can wait for a, a first wave of mobs to spawn and drag one of them up here okay so going forward to the fight this is a very messy kill so let's just rewind to the beginning from the tank's perspective we've started the fight we have three ads spawning tank them up easy peasy there'll be an additional mob which will run to the channeled mobs up on the staircase that's the one that you can't tank you can't do anything to it the sorcerer so ignore that uh, they'll be randomly positioned rain of fires so you can spread out once the dps have cleared the channeled mobs at the top of the stairs you want to then spread out as the dps because you don't want to have this rain of fire to be spawning on the raid so if you spread out preemptively you have a much greater chance to avoid the rain of fire i said it's random it's not random it spawns on a random player and there can be three or four um rain of fires spawning at the same time if the whole raid is stacked you can get three or four rain of fires spawning on top of each other meaning that you're going to die four times quicker because four rain of fires have spawned on top of each other okay so these are the mobs the defenders so let me just rewind quickly when i spin my camera over here there's a defender here so what the defender does is spawn from the east side archway and then runs to the middle where a karma is and then he will start to um establish threat at which point he'll go straight for a healer if we don't have someone picking him up so unfortunately i didn't know that normally on private servers uh the uh th these uh, defenders spawn from either side and i would just pick one up here but what happened is the paladin on this side didn't pick it up on the ptr they only spawn from one archway which is the west archway don't know why but that's how it is so uh yeah we've killed all the ads who were channeling at akama on the top of the stairs and now Akama's loose. DPS need to spread out because of the rain of fire. And then you uh, kill Akama. You use your DPS here to kill Akama. It's very easy. We have almost our entire raid dead. And we still kill Akama. Easy peasy boss. Okay, let's res up. And then we go uh, again. We take the teleportation. From the beginning. We run in. Speak to the NPC at the beginning. And get the teleport. Easy. And then we make our way to Akama. Let me show you the spreadsheet from uh, here. So we take the teleport here. We've gone down here, killed Akama. We've died, taken the teleport again. And then we're running this way towards Akama. If you scroll down here, we have Akama. So again, up here is where we teleport. We come down here, run up these stairs, and we're, we're going this way now. This is so nicely laid out. Osmo did a really good job here. Okay. So again, we've killed Shade of Akama. And we're going over here to the next pack of mobs here. So let's jump back to the raid footage, the video feed, and we have Shadowmoon Champions. We have, oh, I've pulled. We have Shadowmoon Champions. Okay, so these guys have a cleave, although they don't cleave very often. Um, the most important thing that the champions do is, let me use the spreadsheet. They have a whirling blade. So they have a very blue flaming blade nice they will throw it and it will spin around and do aoe damage so they'll throw it around in the room somewhere it's a static aoe once it's thrown so just move away from it and you can forget it so at the bottom of the stairs he's thrown his blade and now at the bottom of the stairs it's whirling around and it'll just stay there unfortunately that moonkin's on the wrong side but it's okay uh, and then we have Shadow Moon Reavers. Now these have a very interesting debuff, or buff rather. Um, can I explain it on the spreadsheet? So these have a spell absorption. So it will uh, absorb spells um, and then deal damage as an AoE. You can basically ignore it, okay? <laughs> uh, you kill them before they really do anything. Okay, so they these are, it's very hard to see because the quality isn't amazing, but he has six stacks of like absorbed damage okay and the more stacks they have from damage from spell damage dealt the more aoe that they'll do back on the raid but it's such little damage and you kill them before they even really do the mechanic so yeah uh, we never had any problem with it even when we were trying to wipe to it 
you still laugh at the small amount of damage it does okay so the next pack is a hound master now these have a frost nova which also drops threat i'm fairly sure so uh you can blessing of freedom the tanks and i i'm pretty sure you can dispel it um i'm 95 percent sure you can dispel it as well i don't think it's a physical trap let me just rewind do i actually get a trap here they have uh, ads as well the uh the hounds the hounds do a, a stacking bleed um uh, it's not too big of a deal um for me personally the hound masters are annoying i think the hound the riding hounds might do a bit of damage with their debuff but i'm more concerned about picking up the hound master than i am the damage of the uh riding hound riding hound oh that's pause and again we've got the same mobs repeated oh no we don't sorry we have a new mob here blood mage so if we go back to this we have the blood mage so face these blood mages away um they have a stacking buff to aoe the raid okay so oh, is that the right mob yeah okay um these mobs essentially they have a frontal ability which is like a seed of corruption okay so you always want to have these these uh, blood mages facing away from the raid rule number one face blood mages away from the raid okay because like i say they'll do a seed of corruption effectively and start doing aoe damage to the raid you don't want that so face them away it's very difficult to do the pull like we're doing so there's a pack in the corner that we're trying to avoid trying to skip and it can be difficult to uh not pull them because we're wanting to be tight against this uh, right hand side so i grab the blood mage and face it away and then the second person here on cross need so the cross is being faced in this direction which is okay but you don't want to be too far above the top of the stairs because you will line of sight your healers and if your healers want to be on this other side of the stairs you'll pull the pack down in the corner which is off screen um also we have the champions again they'll throw their whirling blade so be careful of the aoe from that as well and the cleave uh, so this is the pack in the corner that we end up actually ninja pulling let's rewind so you can see they're running in here because people are getting on the left hand side of this staircase which is not ideal but again it's a bit of an awkward pull but there's nothing wrong with killing them both um if you are killing this pack to play it safe kill this pack first and then the pack that we that we pulled first around the corner and pull that second okay again these mobs can be sheeped they can be cycloned um you can control them a good amount so we have a shadow moon champion obviously he's going to be doing his whirling blade we have the reavers which ref like, which like ab reflect the damage that you deal they have a buff that stacks and then they do aoe although it's not much aoe at all and then we have a couple of warhounds which are easy as well the warhounds do nothing special just tank them up watch the cleave move away from the whirling blade easy we sheep the reavers you could have the reavers in here as well if you wanted to but if you want to play it safe sheep the reavers okay we play it nice and safe here because this is the first clear next up we are going to uh, i think we kill this pack on the right we ca uh, we can skip it if you just hug the left so we have blood mages you want to face them away because again they do the frontal cone um seed of corruption effect the wrath blade wrath bone flare rather will focus a target like half the time they'll be focusing a target and not be tanked and the other half of the time they'll be tanked so you do want to tank them as best you can threat can be iffy because it's only attacking you half the time and the half the time he's not being tanked he's focused on a random raid player and they will cleave you and they will probably one shot you if they uh, reach your melee so uh, don't be in melee range and these shadow moon death shapers don't do anything special um they do one mechanic i can't remember what it was but it's nothing to really worry about next we have two more hound masters easy they just root the tanks dispel kill the ads easy the next pack here we have the weapon master he's a warrior he has one of three phases he can change phase he should have a buff maybe he's not chosen a, uh, a stance yet um but if he's in berserker stance he'll whirlwind and you can kite him he does still move when he whirlwinds um he'll do a spell reflect i think here's his berserker aura damage to increased and he'll also do the whirlwind and i think he has the mortal strike one when he does the arms stance as well really easy just pick up this guy the weapon master and aoe everything else you can pull this pack with anything else as long as the weapon master is picked up by a tank the grunts do nothing and again it's more of the same mobs champions will throw their blades move away from the whirling blade the reavers 
will try and do AoE damage, although they do very little. And then again, moving forward, um, this is a big... You, you can skip this pack if you just hug the left-hand side and go all the way down to the side. Again, it's all the mobs we've seen before. Champions with the Whirling Blade. We have Blood Mages face them away from the raid. Let's keep marching forward and we'll get to Terran Gorefiend. A little bit more trash. Again, more trash, more trash. Okay, these mobs, Hand of Gorefiend. These are Taunt Immune and do quite, quite a fair amount of damage and a Frontal Cleave. So face, face them away and please respect Threat. They're very easy otherwise. Now these two mobs I recommend um, getting ready for the boss and going over tactics before you pull these two mobs because you can use these as rage batteries and run into the fight with 100 rage as a druid or a warrior. So I'm just explaining tactics here. Basically if you get the debuff run into the corner, hit number 5 as your primary uh, ability which does a AoE volley, then 4 which is a nova to root them and then press three to do an ice lance which also novas them which also slows them and then just the priority is five four three and when you're pressing three it's single target everything else is aoe okay or you can look for a town guide yourself as well uh i'm not going to go into super detail for the bosses um i think we wipe the first attempt because our tank dies pre-healing is massive by the way if you're playing healers you need to be pre-healing like as soon as a tank goes into a boss, make sure Inspiration is up or Ancestral Fortitude. Get a Powered Shield on. Tanks, you can pull everything with a um, Nightmare Seed for that little bonus of health. Very useful and I'm a big fan of armor potting on progress just because DPS can always wait one second um, and then pump. And um, like the, the, the armor pot is just safer than a haste pot unless you're genuinely having threat issues. In which case, uh, there's a and there's a different issue there. So, Tom Gorfiend, just tank him away uh, as close to the back of the room as you can, where he stands, and just pump. Use cooldowns. You'll probably get only three people getting the debuff. The debuff is called uh, Shadow of Death, and when you have about ten seconds left of the debuff, run to the back of the room against the wall in the corner. Okay, very straightforward boss. As long as you, the the hardest part of the boss is making sure that people have access to their pet bar. And can press 5, 4, 3, tab, 3, tab, 3, tab, 3, tab. Okay, so when Terran's dead, you can go back to the teleportation area. We're back in the cluster. So just to show you for reference, just to give you uh, some info. So we this is where the Whirlwind Warrior was. We went up here to number 6. We then come through here. We killed these mobs, although you can run around the outside where it's highlighted in green. And skip a lot of this trash. This is Terran's room. Kill Terran. And then you can run all the way back. And then you end up back here. And you can run back, repair if you want to. And then we're going this way towards um, Reliquary of Souls and Blood Boil. So scrolling down here, we have the entrance, which is... Uh, where am I looking here? This is Blood Boil. Oh, so we enter here. So this is where we enter. Okay. So this uh, entrance here in the main hub where you teleport. This hub, this this pathway, leads you here. So I'll show you that on the video. Let's fast forward. Oh, there's uh, again another patrol here of the Illidari Night Lord. I think we're killing the Illidari Night Lord. Oh, do we, do we kill it or do we skip it? Oh, look, we get the AOE and the ads. Cool. So let's rewind it. So here we pull the Illidari Night Lord. We don't summon the ads initially, but then we do. I'm not holding very good threat on Skull, apologies. And because this fight takes a bit longer, um, but also he fears much earlier into the pull. So he does the fear, people get feared. I think I already have a fear ward, or I'm not feared at least. And then he'll do AoE and summon these adds. Does he do AoE? No, he doesn't do AoE. He summons adds, okay, and just blow them up. The adds die super quickly. Um, it's not too difficult. I thought that was raid damage for some reason. Okay, so we've just walked through this doorway which means we have now come over to this part portion. So we're going to be pulling this pack called number one here on the Cosmo's lovely spreadsheet. So we have Blaze Furies, I think is what they're called. Let's look at my um, spreadsheet as well. If you haven't got a spreadsheet, do you even exist? I'm joking. Okay, so let's look at my spreadsheet. So we've done Terran Gorefiend. So now we're on this pack. 
So the Blade Furies, uh, these have a cleave. And do they have a whirlwind? Not sure. They are tauntable, so it's good. We have the Shield Disciples, which are apparently taunt immune on the private server. They might not be tauntable on PTR. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but they have a shield wall. So these can be very annoying because they take so little damage once you start getting them low HP. And we have two Blood uh, blood Prophets, which um, are easily tanked anyway as well. Don't need to worry too much about any I don't even have many mechanics written down for the the Blood Prophets. They probably have a mechanic, but it's really nothing you need to worry about. Oh, we also have a behemoth. These just patrol around. They do a charge, they do a stun, or they do a meteor. So they'll either do a charge and a stun or a meteor. All of them are very easy. The meteor does no damage. The charge is maybe the most annoying one. I'm not sure if there's still charge and melee swing in the game or if Blizzard removed that. But either way, uh, you're never going to wipe to these mobs. Again, another behemoth. What's this one going to do? Don't know. A charge or a stun. Nothing. Nothing to worry about really at all. Okay. So easy peasy. And then we get into another pack where we have. It looks like quite a lot of mobs. You can sheep them if you like. Um, but they're not too difficult. The most important thing is the Blade Fury mobs. Because they do cleave. And they will kill anyone stood in front of them if you're not a tank. Okay. Oh, the Blood Prophets. Oh, these are the same mobs as before, sorry. So these will do the Frontal Cone, um, effectively a uh, a Seed of Corruption. So face these Blood Prophets away from the raid. Okay. Fairly straightforward. Again, they're not particularly difficult. The raid damage isn't particularly high. Here we have Bone Chewer Brawlers. These big mobs, the smaller mobs just get AoE down. Easy peasy. Um, I think these mobs, ha they have an Enrage or a Frenzy, which can be dispelled by a Hunter. Although you can easily tank it without the Hunter Tranquilizing Shot. It's very straightforward. I think they have a Mortal Strike. They don't do enough damage for you to worry about the Mortal Strike. You can just chain pull these mobs all the way until you get to the next boss. And the next boss is Blood Boil. Um, I'm gonna, we had a lot of trouble on the PTR with Blood Boil. Again, it's a pug. Um, let's and go to this looks like it could be a kill let's just go and quickly give you a quick rundown of blood boil we're gonna have three groups of five players so one dps group two dps groups and then like hunter group plus whatever shadow priest and resto druid something resto druids are good because they don't have to they aren't casting typically so they can move without loss of healing or damage okay so you have the tanks tanking uh, blood boil here on the right hand side and he does a frontal breath and a debuff which is the uh can't remember what it's called but this uh rend icon okay this is a stacking debuff which you want you want all three tanks to have this debuff because it's a really good way to generate threat and just like void reaver it's um very threat sensitive and there's a threat drop as well which is a knockback the same way that Void Reaver has, okay? It's very similar to Void Reaver. It's Void Reaver with more mechanics. So every tank wants some of these debuffs. Whoever's tanking it will take more of these debuffs. And you want one or two of these just because you're going to be taking damage and that's going to give you rage. And as a paladin, you're going to be taking damage. You're going to be healed. You're going to have mana. And the same goes for Druid with rage. So once you have one or two stacks, you can just stand on the side and not get more stacks because after the the knockback and the threat drop you don't want to be on high stacks and then it's your turn tanking the boss for a minute or two because then you're going to have really high stacks 10 stacks is okay 15 stacks is you're going to uh, healers are going to be not able to heal the rest of the raid okay and that's basically what the tanks do the knockback will reset threat well not reset threat drop threat significantly like void reaver there's also a disorient he does like a distracting shot or a um, a blind where you'll just be wandering around that's not a threat uh, drop okay uh, you'll just be wandering around disorientated he'll go on the next person on threat hopefully a tank and after the disor disorient ends you'll tank the boss again because your threat didn't drop um yeah just be sensitive on threat from a dps point of view as much as a tank point of view uh, let's just rewind to the pull so what you have is five players here 
Um, and what happens is he has a blood boil mechanic where the five people furthest away from him will take a blood boil stack. It's a stacking dot and they'll take damage. And then they run back into the raid and then the next group of five players go back over here and then he does another blood boil. Again, the blood boil hits the five players furthest away and that'll hit the second group of players taking blood boil and then they go back to the raid. And then he's going to do blood boil again. So the third pack a third group of blood boil soakers go over here they take the third um, blood boil and then there's no fourth blood boil group needed because by that time the first blood boil group has had their debuff end and you just cycle uh, blood boil group one then they come back to the raid blood boil group two come back to the raid blood boil three back to the raid after they get the debuff from blood boil um, you do this five times and then he goes into phase two so it's group one, then come back, group two, come back, group three, come back, group one, come back, group two, come back and spread. Okay, this is the most important thing for blood boil. We wiped on this for like six hours or like th three hours because, well, threat was sometimes an issue, but mainly because of the spread. So he will always do five blood boils. So it's blood boil soaker group one, two, three, one, two to make five total cycles of the blood ball soaking, okay? And it's on that fifth one you want to spread out because after the fifth one, he will then grow in size and focus a random raid member. You'll get a debuff, which means you generate zero threat in this phase. The whole raid will be hit with this debuff. No one is generating threat in this phase. One person is selected as the target. Spread out because the breath will kill anyone stood in front of the boss. And you want to be preemptively spread because remember the whole raid is stacked behind the boss. Um, the target gets a damage increase as well as an HP increase. Sorry, my nose is so itchy. Um, so don't think that you're here to do damage when you have a damage increase. You're here to tank the mob because if you die as the selected player, the tanks then need to tank the buffed boss and that's very difficult. He hits very hard. So you want to iron shield potion for more armor you want a powered shield you want a bear form you want to put a shield on as a shaman as a paladin you want to um, drain life as a warlock you want to self heal as anyone if you can self heal like a rep paladin devil aura shield on holy light spam that's literally what you do to stay alive your paramount objective is to stay alive during these phase twos and then at the end of the phase you can use the debuff as an indicator or dbm or whatever boss mod you have as an indicator for the duration of this phase two at the end of the phase two, he'll go back to um, a start like uh, um, bet like um, looking at threat and just go back to normal. So whoever was tanking him before this phase two will be tanking him when the debuff ends at the end of phase two. So at the end of phase two, I'm ready to receive him. And look, he comes back to me because I know I was tanking him before the phase two. And so I'm tanking him at the end of the phase two. Paladins, you can bubble yourself to get rid of your debuff stack. It can get quite high and you can bop somebody else to get rid of their uh, stacking debuff as well if you're struggling to get threat off somebody like they dodge the knockback too many times like i'm sure we've all seen on void reaver when one tank seems to tank void reaver for the whole fight and dps need to really hold back um what you can do is just stop damaging as the tank and let them catch up additionally your other tanks can just get more and more of the uh, frontal cone uh rend looking debuff to generate more mana or more rage to generate more threat to climb the threat meter more quickly and to overtake you uh, easier, faster. Okay, that's Blood Boil. Let's keep going. And then we're going to go to Reliquary of Souls. This is the pack before Reliquary of Souls. There's a little like event thing with extra mobs, but it's very straightforward. We've had all these packs before. The uh, Furies, they do a cleave. The Prophets, face them away. They do a Blood Bolt, which is like a frontal cone um, seed of corruption. And we have the Disciples, which are like warriors. They do a shield uh, a shield wall, which is annoying, and a charge, which you just saw there. Nothing to worry about at all. You see, in this pug, we're no longer losing any members to any of this trash because it's easy. So buff up and get ready for the boss here. You, This is your last chance to get food and buff before you pull Reliquary of Souls. There is no safe spot. The ads spawn, uh, these respawn after about 30 seconds or so, and the bosses pull range is quite large there's an, again there's no safe spot you will be pulling the boss so i think i'm just doing tactics here i don't think we one shot this 
and I skip forward to the kill. Yes. Okay, we've got. Sorry, I just need to back it up a little bit. This is phase one. Oh, this is an iffy phase one. Okay, so you basically just walk your way through this gauntlet. These mobs do nature damage. They do virtually no damage. Just mark a skull and keep running forward. Press W and it's no problem at all. You'll get to the top of the ramp and you just want to stack in a in a designated area. Get people healed. Make sure people have mana. You don't want to start the boss with all these mobs up. But to be honest with you, it's not the end of the world if you do. The most important thing for phase one is dispel. If you are a class that has the ability to dispel, you need to dispel. You There's no healing going on in this phase. No one in the raid is getting any kind of healing because of the aura debuff. Okay, So shield block is insane for warriors. Keep it up. Powered shield is insane. Keep it up. Um, the boss will do an enrage. He also doesn't hit very hard in this phase, which is a good thing because no healing. So the boss will enrage. So oh, also the way that threat works is he'll attack the person closest to the center of his hitbox. So tanks can just walk out, a new tank walk in. Melee, max range the entire fight, okay? Because you don't want to be accidentally, oh, I was accidentally the closest person to the middle of the hitbox and start tanking the boss. He'll change target about every two seconds, so it's not immediate. So don't go to 5% HP and then jump out and a new tank jump in because he won't swap instantly. He will swap to a new tank, you know? Um, I died there because I was low HP and didn't get a dispel. So please dispel. When you uh, kill him, he, he will do his transitional uh, phase where he will spawn adds. The adds will heal you and regen mana. Regen mana being the big thing because I think in that last, or is it this phase or the last phase as well, you don't regen any mana. But between every single phase, you regen mana. So it's super easy. You'll get full mana. You'll get full health. Don't worry, don't worry about it. You can also uh, drain souls for shards if you want as a warlock. So this is phase two. The easiest thing for this is to have one rogue with PvP gloves because you can kick the, uh, what's it called? Fight? Let me see what the cast is. I can't remember what it's called. The Spirit Shock. So Spirit Shock, um, if you're doing any kind of interrupt, always have a Curse of Tongues from a Warlock. It's so much easier to do the fight with a Curse of Tongues. So Warlocks, looking at you. Curse of Tongues, please. So Spirit Shock, you kick it with a rogue and then you go to range and then you deadly throw the next one bit shock deadly throw boom easy and then one rogue can interrupt almost the whole fight if the spirit shock does land on the tank it does a disorient effect on him and he'll attack the person second on threat not good also uh, in this phase there's a 50 percent reflect damage going out so the raid is taking damage particularly the warlocks you know, if they get an 8k shadow ball crit they're taking 4k damage and if they crit another Shadow Bolt, they're dead. Because you're not going to get healed in, you know, 1.9 second cast or 2.5 second cast, you know. Um, also, there's a Deaden, which you can see on the Deadly Boss Mods. This is his scariest ability. Basically, it'll be cast on the tank and it can be interrupted and it can be spell flected back onto him. This will increase damage taken by 50%. So if this Deaden is kicked, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't do anything. If it's on me, I take 50% more damage. If I reflect it on the boss, it takes 50% more damage. The risk of reflecting it back onto the boss is in conjunction with the 50% reflect damage on the raid, the 50% increased damage. Sorry, was I saying re reflect the entire time? I meant the dead end is 50% increased damage taken. Okay, so because of the 50% reflect on the raid, adding on to that 50% increased damage taken, now the Warlocks are taking more damage. The Enhancement Shaman taking more damage. The Red Paladin taking more damage. It's these three classes that tend to die in Phase 2 because of their burst damage potential, you know? Warlocks, Rets, and Enhancers. Or maybe they're just the players that I played with in the past that died in Phase 2. And that's Phase 2. Alternatively, if you don't have Rogue, you can just assign uh, Kickers. What I normally do is just uh, assign two or three people, and I will just say... Um, Lolol, kick, and then Kramer, kick, and then uh, Shadrux, kick. Lolol, kick, Kramer, kick, Shadrux, kick. And just go through the names as I see each cast of the Spirit Shock. It's a little bit intense, 
particularly if you're trying to uh, reflect the dead in and build threat. But it really helps if you just literally have somebody, like just have a DPS, literally not even take part in the fight and just look at the cast bar and just call people out. Lol, lol kick, next cast. Kramer, kick, next cast. Shadrux, crit, uh, kick, or kick next, you know? And it's so much easier. You don't want to be wiping in phase two because of the kicking not being good. It's easily done. Uh, and the third and final phase, okay? So whenever um, Reliquary of Souls changes target, there is a 10 second or eight second debuff on the raid. 10 second debuff. This debuff increases threat generated by everyone in the raid because everyone has the debuff by 100%. So 100% increased threat generated. So I have someone else typically um, start on the boss, like do a mangle maul, nice high threat, and I taunt. So because the boss changes target, everyone in the raid does 100% increased threat for 10 seconds. And then no one in the raid does damage, okay? For 10 seconds. I'm pumping threat. Threat, 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 threat. No one in the raid is doing any damage whatsoever, but they're healing me, okay? Also, he does increased damage when this uh, debuff is up as well. So maybe um, preemptively living seed, okay? And if you drop, obviously, last stand. And the countdown on Lust and DPS is this debuff. So I'm saying do damage in three, do damage in two, do damage in one, do damage now when the debuff's ended. Look at this threat lead I have. I'm 52,000 threat ahead of everybody else in the raid. They've all lusted and they're going to go ham, okay? There's also a soul scream, which you'll see the, um, the timer for in DBM. Whenever this is close to hitting zero... Like now, you need to stance dance. Now, what I'm used to seeing is the uh, the debuff being the cooldown of the ability. Um, you want to stance dance before this reaches zero because he does it sometimes on cooldown. I think often on cooldown. So uh, the, the, the way the, the damage from this ability is dealt based on your power bar. So if you have max mana as a paladin, you're going to take a lot of damage. If you're max rage as a warrior, you're going to take a lot of damage. Same for Druid and Rage. So as a Druid, power shift every time this Soul Scream is coming off the timer. Paladins, um, dump your ray, your mana early, okay? And Warriors, jump into Battle Stance, then immediately jump back into Defensive Stance. You can see me Stance Dancing here as well. Um, warriors, really comfy because you have access to Last Stand and Shield Wall. And this phase can slap you hard, okay? And that's it. There's uh, also a stacking... Uh, we going out on the raid so healing gets more and more intense it's like a soft end rage timer you want to uh you know blast him and one good thing maybe the people who are very low on threat can start doing um threat during the 10 second increased threat at the beginning of this phase three but what it's just so comfy just have everybody stop damage okay because like we're in a pug and we just killed him straightforward okay that's relic of souls we're going to keep marching forward. Okay, I think this video is only going to be Black Temple because this video is long enough, okay? Should I do it both in one video? We'll see. Maybe in post, I'll uh, stitch them together, do them as two separate videos. Okay, so we have Priestess of Delight. We can jump back to my spreadsheet and look at some notes here. So we've done Reliquary of Souls. Nice. Oh, we also did Blood Ball as well. You can do these four bosses in any order shade of a karma you always want to do first because he will make all of the mobs outside in the teleportation area neutral and not aggressive okay so terran reliquary blood boil okay so we've killed all like blood boil and everything so now we're on our way to mother shiraz so we're in this section of the spreadsheet okay um or we can look at cosmos as well for more visual aids uh so we've cleared all of this we've gone back the way we came through this doorway and that's put us back to here where we've come out of here and we're going this way up here and that will take us to here okay and then we're going to go around here around here around here okay so that's where we're going and again you can read up more about this on uh, cosmo spreadsheet or my spreadsheet okay so Let's look at some of the, uh... here we go, Priestess of the Light. So these priestesses are fairly straightforward, but bear with me. You do want to know some of the, so these AOE packs are super, super easy. Paladin, tank them all. There will be mobs patrolling. Um, your warrior, druid, pick these ones up, okay? 
these ones do le very little damage and the, the anything patrols does bigger damage okay so these uh priestesses we have a torment and we have a delight i like to kill the torment first because after a period of time this priestess will get a buff which uh ref which deals 2500 shadow damage to every time you attack with a spell or a melee attack so the priestess of torment is kind of like a bit of a ticking time bomb so you can attack her nice 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 and then she'll start reflecting damage every time you attack which is not nice so rogues warriors fury if you're attacking rapidly you're gonna die so quickly if you attack when she has shell of pain did i say what the ability is called it's called shell of pain um, they also have a thing where they kind of like share HP. So some of the damage uh, from Skull will go directed to Cross and vice versa, I think. Cross is like a healer and Skull is like a, a damage machine, okay? And the Cross will also do a circle of healing and also a heal that can be interrupted. Yeah, I think that's all the mechanics. All the ones that you need to worry about. Anyway, there's the greater heal. Easy peasy. And again, a devoted steward. That's just sort of patrolling mob running around druid warrior pick them up or if you're tanking the the um the mobs we've just uh picked up the paladin whoever so again these mobs that all pull together all picked up by your paladin the um the single mobs picked up by the warrior or the druid okay and again there's another elite in the corner that should just be picked up by a uh, warrior or a paladin and then these are just air weed by the paladin and the rest of the raid okay uh again priestess torment delight kill torment first before the pain shield well let me check my spreadsheet what do i call it what's it called or do i let's look at the cosmo spreadsheet does he have it here uh torment of delight uh da, 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 da. uh can't see what it is okay let's look at my spreadsheet oh that's not the right one uh torment of priestess of torment sorry uh yeah shell of pain is what it's called 2.5k shadow damage cool next okay we've seen these mobs fast forward do we wipe here i think we have an unfortunate pull we, oh we don't quite wipe but we pull a load of trash all at once there okay we have the priestess of dementia she summons some mirrors that just like it's like a mirror image in wrath of the lich king right is it wrath of the lich king the mages get that ability cataclysm i don't know um, she summons copies of herself and they will win. Um, they don't do much damage. You can just ignore them. They'll despawn. And the Mistress of Woe has a curse. Decurse it. It does no damage anyway. But if you want them to decurse, you can decurse it. Very straightforward. And these ads, these patrons, they can... Okay, we've got more, more Priestess of Torment, Priestess of Delight. Easy. Just kill them before the Shell of Pain. These patrons can cast Sheep. So, uh, trem uh, Granny Totem can be good. Um, I think they can sheep your Paladin tank. So just be careful. Um, do they sheep? Or was that only on private servers? I don't know. But they definitely mind control. So, yeah, grounding as much as you can. So does the green beam... Do, do they do a channeling? Is that their mind control? Okay. Okay, we've got more Priests of Dementia... I'm going to fast forward to when we're killing Mother. Go back. Um, I, I remember I commented on one of my YouTube videos saying that I was planning to use an Iron Shield potion on Mother Shiraz. Um, I've changed my mind. I definitely want to be saving my potion cooldown for a sh Shadow Protection potion. Because the spiky damage that kills you is going to be Shadow Damage on top of the physical. And just taking consistently less physical damage isn't going to save your life as much as like a 3k shadow absorb. So you can tank Mother in several positions. Uh, this is one where we kill it on the PTR. There are other positions you can tank her as well. The tanks need to be mindful that there is a cleave. You all need to share the cleave because it does 30k damage. And each of the tanks just want to take 10k damage because then you survive easily. Uh, you can survive it and take half of it each as two tanks, but you're opening yourself up to a bit of you know, spike damage there. So you can stand up underneath the fish and if you jump and you don't actually jump up, that's good because the priest, uh, the mother shrouds will knock you up. And if she can't knock you up because you're bonking your head on the fish, you won't get knocked up. Similarly, on the edge of this couch on the corner, you can also avoid getting knocked up. And the tanks don't get knocked up and they don't get fatal attraction either. 
they wear shadow res. 244 buffed is the sweet spot. 174 unbuffed is the sweet spot. You get 70 from the priest uh, shadow buff. If you're struggling and people are dying, add more shadow res. If you have people consistently dying to the fatal attraction, add more shadow resist. Get shadow resist buff. Like if your goal is to kill this boss, add more shadow res. You overcome the damage so easily by having more shadow res. You overcome the mana drain because you have shadow res, you resist it. You overcome the silence because of the shadow res, you resist it. It's so easy with shadow res, okay? The tanks also, I plan to, I think on progress at least, wear the, and probably after, um, wear at least the shadow res neck. Potentially the crafted neck as well for the on use absorb. So you can use the neck to absorb damage for your whole party, as well as the potion to absorb your personal shadow damage. Um, also, when you get fatal attraction, health stone almost immediately if you need to. Um, engineering boots are useful if you have them. Um, but yeah, if you are not a mana user or you're not going to be ooming, save potion for shadow uh, protection potion and spread out better than they did. If you want to see a more detailed uh, Mother Shiraz guide, uh, you can check the description where I uh, include more information regarding Mother Shiraz. Okay, when you kill Mother Shiraz, great. We have these um, Sentinels. They have a very interesting um, arcane charge. They have like an L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, I think. The L5 is the only one you need to worry about. They will target a random player. Let's try and find them targeting somebody. And uh, when they target somebody, they will one-shot them. They will deal damage equal to their full HP. So they're doing an L5 arcane charge, okay? They are targeting Toshibe. Toshibe needs to get a powered shield. I think you could Nightmare Seed it to survive it. Toshibe... Yes, does something to not to get his HP. I think it may be um, Toshibe, I think is a tank. Yeah, he's, he's our uh, um, prop paladin. So I think he uh, living Nightmare Seed did rather and survived that with a Nightmare Seed. But ideally, I think the Powered Shield is the play. So again, is it going to do another one? Also, like um, he does like these Moonfire effects. Just tank it. Um, he'll also spawn some of these like little uh, columns of light. These are ones you need to move out of. These ones are consistent. So it, it looks a bit odd because like the Moonfire ones, they just disappear immediately. These columns of light deal damage, so avoid them. So to recap, L5 charge, powered shield or nightmare seed to survive, it deals 100% of your HP. So you need to increase your HP or get a uh, absorb. Move out of these narrow columns of light, they'll deal damage and the Moonfire does nothing okay and then we have the trash just before illidari council you can sheep almost all of this trash is my understanding so sheep it if you want to the mages do a blizzard they do a flame strike the rogues vanish i think the paladins do a stun it's um dispellable so cc as much as you like if you're a confident raid you won't need cc but by all means whip out the polymorph if you feel more comfortable that way Easy peasy, we ninja pull an extra pack and we survive. It's that easy, okay? And then we have a load of wipes on Illidari Council. Okay, I've got some really good info for Illidari Council if you are unfamiliar. I mean, even if you are familiar, there's a good chance that I'm going to blow your brain with some really good info here. Let me just find out roughly where the kill is. This will do. So, Let's start off with the basics. Um, you're going to be killing uh, Gathios. He's the Paladin mob. Um, he will have a seal of command. It's the DPS one that Rep Paladins use. I don't know if that's the name of it. But he'll have a buff. I recommend using a weak aura so you can tell when he has the buff. When he has the buff, it's this one here. Whatever, what's this uh, uh, seal of command? Is it seal of command? I think so. It, I made a weak aura for it. So when he has seal of command, you use spell reflect. You will spell reflect the seal and you deal like... How much damage? Uh, don't know. It doesn't say up here. But yeah, you'll reflect his damage. Pog. Poggers. Um, DBM will tell you if you're stood in the AoE. Move out of the AoE. As a tank, you generally just run in a big circle and you just move to the edge of the AoE. So look, let me just... You, let me use some sick ass snip skills. So, um, the blizzard. Oh, let's change color. 
uh customized pen uh lime okay so blizzard is here so i move to here then consecrate is here i move to here okay and then whatever flame strike is here i move to here so i basically have like four or five of these patches that i stand on and i basically rotate throughout the fight going through all of these different areas and you'll see that as we go through so that's tanking gathius um, he hits quite hard so iron shield potion is recommended the rogue which is marked cross i can't remember his name off the top of my head um, he will vanish from time to time uh, we have a bear pick him up and i think bear is the best tank to pick up the rogue because um the priest and the paladin will both put a shield on um the rogue potentially um the priest shield makes the rogue immune to magic damage and the paladin shield makes the rogue immune to physical damage as a paladin if your judgment misses on the rogue you're in trouble particularly if you don't have um avenging wrath no is that what it's called the one where you throw your shield that one you can struggle picking up the uh, ad if judgment gets resisted um but also if uh, the priest shield making the rogue immune to magic is up you're going to struggle picking him up the benefit of having a druid is when the magic immune shield is up on the rogue you can obviously use your physical attacks as normal great and when the um the physical paladin bop shield is on the rogue you jump out of form and spam three or four moon fires and then jump back into bear form and you're tanking the shield will then run out of duration and then you'll tank him like normal druid is bis for picking up the rogue also charge is great and also you can taunt the rogue so get taunting the rogue um the rogue will also uh once he's in vanished he'll open up on a player and dot them with their poison with the rogue poison you can't dispel the poison it ticks for like 2k a second or something so it ticks quite um aggressively and he'll also do a 7k hit as well a few seconds after the poison ticks so that person needs to have instant heals the majority of the time you'll be losing people is the rogue will dot them and then three two one the rogue will 7k hit them so you need to immediately spam heals on the person who's getting the rogue bleed okay because they'll take a 7k hit he deals his 7k hit between like three and six seconds after the the initial rogue dot is applied so you do have a bit of a window to react um obviously there's lots of aoe going out um there's flame strikes on random players there's um blizzards on random players so spread out so you have less chance to um be hit by these and if someone near you has one spawn hopefully that doesn't mean that you need to move if you're stood on top of that person obviously you're going to need to move something that triggers me quite frankly is when there are so many people stacked they think oh yes i need to be really close to attack these mobs no you don't i show you where i'm tanking skull skull's the kill target by the way he's the one with all the debuffs oh also gathius will get a aura which increases his spell resistance by like 250 uh, 250 so that's when casters will move away and not attack gathius the paladin mark skull and attack one of the other mobs okay and the druid picking up the rogue uh, just drag him to gathius so the melee can cleave um, the mage tank tanking the mage mob who's spell stealing the dampen magic to reduce magic damage taken um you can you can wear normal gear okay there's no special stamina gear required there's no special arcane gear required once you have the dampened magic spell stolen you are safe also before the pull make sure that the dampened magic you're spell stealing has a long duration because it's like a five minute duration or something on the npc and then it'll be reapplied when it fades don't start the encounter with ten, like five seconds left on the on, on the npc's dampened magic because you will spell spell steal a, a five second duration dampened magic and that's not good and then you have the priest as well which needs to be tanked the priest npc is tanked on the top of the stairs it does melee attacks as well as a smite on its current target so that'll be the tank the paladin tank in our case and you need to in interrupt the holy nova okay because it will heal the entire raid similar to hiking mulgar 
Again, the priest can be bubbled by the paladin, making her physical immune and physical interrupt immune. So you need to have a uh, like a shaman interrupt um, with their shock. And you can also have a rogue there um, interrupting with the kick when uh, the priest shields themselves and makes them magic immune to damage and magic interrupt. And that's the whole fight. Spread out as much as you can. That's uh, Illidari Council. Okay, and then we have Illidan himself. Let's scooch up all the way. I did an in-depth guide on Illidan. There's no more trash, by the way. You go straight to Illidan. Uh, let's do a very brief Illidan just to wrap up this video. If you want a more in-depth Illidan guide, I made quite a good video, if I do say so myself, linked in the description. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, if your warrior can't use shield block properly to shield block the shear, uh, change for a different class. Uh, preferably Paladin. Okay. But if you have a warrior that can save their shield block and only use it when Illidan casts shield, warrior is a really good choice at 65 percent he goes into phase two we have ads do not be more than 25 yards away from this blade of azanoth if you move 25 yards away from this the elementals will charge you and they will enrage increasing damage by 250 percent and you will die the next person that the flame of azanoth will die so on and so on and then you'll wipe okay kill the ball at a time avoid the eye beam this is day one of the PTR. There is no I-beam. Blizzard fixed it. You will see an I-beam. Uh, threat reset. He will come down. You ask for a misdirect. Because I'm in a pug, I don't get a, a misdirect. I pick him up. And we uh, start phase three. This is the phase where you will lust if you want to skip phase four. If you're a pumper guild, um, this is where you want to be lusting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably not in a pumper guild so after 60 seconds you'll see um demon phase where he kneels down and goes into demon phase spread out melee to the back of the room you can't melee uh, illidan in this fight in this phase sorry for the next 60 seconds uh kill these ads that spawn i'm doing a very bad job of illidan strategy because if you if you really want an illidan strategy video um Look at my proper guide, link in the description. At 30% uh, HP, he will stun the entire raid. You'll regen some of your mana back, about a third. Now he's in phase five. He will enrage, dealing extra damage and hastening his attacks. Don't forget to shield block the Shear. Use cooldown when he's enraged. And uh, Maiev will drop a demon trap. She'll teleport away and do the demon trap. Kite to the demon trap. Once in the trap, Illidan will take 100% increased damage. Use any remaining cooldowns you have, and Illidan will die. Grats, that's Illidan. Okay, you know what? I am going to do high gel in this video as well. So bear with me. I will just find a high gel video. Warrior TSW high gel video. <laughs> okay, uh, the, the, the high gel full clear. This is a good video, even if I do say so myself. Okay, so let's just have a look at the spreadsheets once more familiarize ourselves now i'm going to use all of cosmos spreadsheet for the high gel uh portion because it is so good okay so the this is a breakdown of all of the ads the ghouls so easy ignore them crypt fiends very easy but the web can be annoying but it doesn't happen very often basically as a tank it's annoying to be webbed but uh, more so as warrior because i can't shapeshift like a druid and i don't have a range taunt like a paladin um the necromancers so there are two mobs which are there are three mobs which are scary and there's a four mobs okay i'll go through them all uh, the necromancers can be quite scary because of their cast shadow bolt okay you can get multiple sh uh, necromancers necromancers spawning at each wave of um high gel. they will literally uh all potentially shadow bolt your paladin at the same time You'll take four Shadow Bolts at the same time and you can just die as the Paladin, okay? So be careful. Um, Frenzy, don't worry about it. Cripple, dispel it. It's okay. The Raise the Dead. Warlocks, when you're using your Seed of Corruption or other people AoEing, just be mindful that the ads will run towards you because 
there won't be time for the consecrate to tick for the paladin to generate threat so the raised dead adds will run towards the warlocks so be mindful or don't be too far away from the paladin as well you don't want the ads to be running like a mile to get to you you want them to just be on you after a second and tanks are nearby to pick them up the abominations can be very scary because of their knockdown free action potion is insanely powerful here to prevent the paladin from getting stunned ideally the two other tanks will be picking up as many abominations off the paladin as possible to um, reduce the amount of knockdowns and stuns on the paladin the paladin is going to be tanking a lot of mobs at once you'll see in the raid footage in a moment getting stunned stops the paladin from dodge blocking and parrying you're going to be taking so much damage as a paladin with 10 mobs attacking you when you're stunned banshees these are a bit annoying as well because they have a banshee whale similar to the shadow ball up here shadow bolt and there are waves of trash that have both necromancers shadow bolting and banshees banshee wailing they will synchronize their bolt and whale and there'll be loads of bolts and whales attacking all on your paladin on the pull and the paladin can easily die okay i'm stressing this point because you don't want that to happen um the anti-magic shell is annoying for casters um banshees can be stunned so if you want to time a nice stun you can avoid them uh, and stun them and avoid them doing their anti-magic shell during that cast okay engineering grenades are also very powerful to stop them in their tracks <coughs> i'm starting to lose my voice um gargoyles uh, these uh, sp are spawning in like several random locations um but i'll sh i'll show you roughly where they are they do a gargoyle strike again very similar to the trash in the supremus outside room um grab aggro and then run with them they will slowly uh, descend towards the ground and can be attacked by melee as well as the range groups uh, and the frost worms uh have a similar story uh, just attack them in the sky and i think they can be dragged down i apologize for my very itchy nose okay infernals they have an aura which deals damage it doesn't do much damage uh yeah just tank and spank these and then finally the fell hounds these can be very annoying for your paladin because of the mana burn now fortunately they don't always mana burn the paladin okay but don't expect more than like two consecrations on the pull because your paladin will probably be oom at that point okay so just be careful um when there are fell hounds because your paladin won't be pumping out consecrations and lots of threat like you would be used to so without further ado let's jump on to some uh oh and also like the, the, just like there's a wave breakdown of everything that happens all the mobs and uh, the bosses as well in um cosmos spreadsheet this is a really nice spreadsheet and it looks very sexy okay so let's jump to the rage footage raid footage the first wave is just gargoyles as indicated on cosmos spreadsheet easy peasy just tank and spank the best thing you want to do is line of sight of them around this corner because all the casters then all just come up uh, and they're easy to tank because they're all stacked they'll all be on the consecration another tip drop the consecration here ahead of time and all the mobs more or less will walk through the consecration okay the consecration ticks all of these ads are aggroed on the paladin more or less the paladin is around the corner drops the second consecration lot line of sights everything and we're good okay so these quick fiends are going to be doing a root which is annoying for me but in the grand scheme of things it's still fine let's fast forward third wave at the beginning we have do you have anything special here it's still super duper easy okay yeah it starts off very easy uh next wave phase uh wave four we have again it's so easy oh we have some necromancers so again these necromancers if i scroll to the top they will have their shadow bolt and they'll also have their raised dead and the cripple which is dispellable all of which very straightforward and i think at this, this stage you're only getting two necromancers very straightforward next wave oh also in case you don't know um you speak to jaina um at the fort in order to start the event 
and every time you kill the uh, last mob of the wave the next wave will automatically start unless you um, trigger it based on time there is a actual time limit on the amount of time you can spend on each wave but generally speaking you'll have plenty of damage and uh, you'll be cl uh, cleaning up all the mobs and the mobs being cleared will trigger the next wave spawning so we have more necros here again it's really nice to line of sight them because if any point i get webbed by the spiders i'm not moving anywhere and that makes it difficult for me to pick up anything that is uh lost on threat again just make sure your warlocks and aoe's in general are being sensible and uh, it's very very straightforward we have a very good pug here by the way um so again oh we have more abominations now so again these abominations will be stunning periodically uh, they'll be stunning their target which will be the paladin because he's, he's tanking 90 percent of this okay so as a warrior or druid you can either be taunting the abominations to reduce the stun on the paladin or you can be taunting and tanking the necromancers okay uh melee dps you're fine to tank the shadow necromancers to be honest with you they don't really melee for much so yeah Okay, let's keep pressing on. We are wave 8 of 8. So this is the last wave before the first boss. The first boss being Rage Winterchill. So wave 7 is kind of where you want to be putting on your PvP trinket if you want to use a PvP trinket. I'll explain the PvP trinket in a moment. So we have our one last mob. And now it's the boss. Lovely. We have a hunter go forward to misdirect. Here's Rage Winterchill. Oh, that was a, 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 a frost team immediately. So again, I can uh, rely on Cosmo's spreadsheet here. So basically, you just spread out max range. We have the ice bolt, which is the reason why you would consider wearing a PvP trinket. You can just trinket out of it immediately. You can bubble it and you can ice block it, I think. Okay. Um, it deals 10,000 damage over four seconds. So you need to be healed quickly. Powered shield, flash heal, boom, 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 or pvp trinket very nice there's also a frost nova and melee sorry your damage gets cucked because of the frost armor your time bet between attacks will be slowed and death and decay is the big one it's it can be a bit difficult to see if your graphic settings aren't super duper maxed out but um this deals 15 percent of your max hp every second the main tank i'd say stay in it particularly if you're a warrior because you need that extra rage to hold threat you're not going to be holding threat if you're running out and not dealing any damage for the duration of the death and decay so let's jump back to the footage the ice bolt on the hunter immediately does he beast your wrath out of it that's fun but apparently you can beast your wrath out of it okay so you want to spread out just because if the death and decay spawns well it spawns under under a random player so if you're pre-spread there's less chance it's going to be on you Again, you can see someone here, March Skull. They have the uh, the Frost Bolt. They're going to be taking 10,000 damage over four seconds. They quickly heal, quickly heal, and they survive. Pog, lovely. Move forward. We're going to get a Death and Decay. Okay, my gra graphic settings are on Classic setting, okay? And it's very difficult to see that there is a Death and Decay here. How many of you can tell there's a death and decay there? It's tricky. Let's have some... Um, yeah, you can just see it kind of moving. Um, but if you've got uh, boss mod add-ons, they will be telling you when you're stood in the death and decay. So uh, actually, you can also um, get a clue because of the channel. So the boss will channel death and decay when the death and decay... You can also see all the NPCs die here as well. Uh, Jaina, who's just off to the screen to the right, is not engaged with the fight. If Jaina dies for whatever reason, the fight is considered a wipe and the trash will despawn and reset and the boss will respawn and reset. One good thing is you can do what I'm trying to do now and get the boss close to Jaina. You can either engage her in the fight, but it's very tricky if Jaina gets hit by the death and decay because it's percentage based HP taken. Um, Jaina has a aura which will buff people nearby which I can't remember what it is. is it double your spirit it's some sort of spirit based regen 
um, which is quite useful. So if you're an arcane mage or anyone that really benefits from spirit, um, try and ask your tank to tank it a little bit closer towards Jaina so you can uh, benefit from that. Okay, and that's Rage Winter Chill. It's pure and simple. Easy one shot. Remember to loot the phylactery for your Black Temple quest. Okay, and then talk to Jaina again and you'll start the next wave set. Fast forward a bit. Okay, let's have a quick jump back onto Cosmo's spreadsheet, wave breakdown. So we've done all of this. We've done the first eight waves and Rage Winter Chill. Nice. Now we have the next eight waves. So it'll be Gargoyles, then Ghoul, Abomination, Ghoul, Crypt Fiend, Shadow, Necromancer, etc., etc., etc. So this is where we are now. If you want to follow along, I'm just drinking some tea. <laughs> Let's fast forward, wave two. Again, it's very straightforward. We have Necromancers. They're going to be doing the raised dead. Fast forward. We've got Banshees now. So just to remind us what the Banshees do, the Banshees have their immunity to magic with their anti-magic shell. It can be stunned. They have their Banshee Whale, which is like a shadow bolt for all intents and purposes, and a curse, which um, reduces melee attack Hit chance by 66%. So, dispel. Although, if you're a mage, just keep doing AoE. Melee, do not really compete. Like, look at the damage meter here. This mage should not spend a global decursing. Because he's doing nearly 7k DPS. It's not worth him spending globals to free up, you know, an arms warrior who's doing 1k DPS. Okay. Keep going forward. We have more mobs. Again, it's more of the same. Very repetitive. That's why people generally don't like this raid. The thing that I do kind of like is, you know, it rewards people who pay attention. Like, you just have to focus for like an hour, an hour and a half, and you've cleared the whole dungeon. If, it, like, it punishes people who are AFK or can't focus, which makes the guilds on the raids that can shine, you know? There'll be guilds out there who wipe on um, high gel and then who will complain and then there'll be guilds who don't wipe on high gel and they'll be, yeah, high gel is what it is versus high gel sucks. Blizzard needs to nerf high gel. Like there'll be posts because it's so punishing if you wipe. That's why it's important to watch videos like this maybe. Yeah. Okay, um, Anethron. Let's jump quickly to um, Cosmo's spreadsheet and have a quick breakdown. Let's go to Anethron. The main ability is the um, Carrion Swarm, which is a frontal cone. The angle is about 30 degrees of a cone. Um, and the main mechanic is it reduces healing done to you as a debuff by 75% for 15 seconds. So you see these healing marks? You need to be healed, sorry, you need to be spread as healers equally around the room, okay? Because a random person will be the focus. And he'll do a 30 degree, roughly, maybe 40 degree cone. And everyone in that cone, or this cone, or this cone, or whatever the cone will be, will have their healing reduced by 75%. You do not want two or three of your healers with this reduced healing debuff because people will die. Why is my nose so itchy? Like, I've got a problem with it. Okay. Um, particularly your paladin um, healer. What's really nice is if you literally just have your paladin healer stood on their own. So there's a very low chance that they'll receive the uh, debuff and they'll just be able to heal full time. It's like a one in, 50, uh, one in 25 chance that they're the target of that cone. And then ra ranged or melee can just uh, spread out everywhere else. It's very good to have two plus two-ish pieces of fire res gear on your elemental tank okay um you can just straight up not kill any of the infernals and just not take damage with the fire res gear okay so you either want to kill the adds with no fire res on the tank or use fire res on the tank and not kill the adds because you don't take damage because you're wearing fire res or you can have a vocal tank on the elementals and say i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine 30 seconds later, okay, I'm not fine. Please kill one of these elementals. Okay, raid swaps, kills the elemental. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, there's a sleep, which will put people to sleep as a debuff. Um, 
Vampiric Aura, the boss will heal himself based on damage dealt. So aimed shot if is a last resort. Um, but Mortal Strike and Wound Poison are the preferable options. And that's about it. So let's cut into the raid footage and have a quick look. I hope this video uploads to YouTube quickly. <laughs> Hopefully it gets um, uploaded and processed before the launch of TBC. Oh my god, can you imagine? Okay, Anethron. Um, there's the frontal cone. Again, if you missed it, let's just do a quick rewind. So there's the cone of the Carrion Swarm. So everyone in this cone now has 75% reduced healing. Okay. So you do not want multiple healers hit by that. Oh, look, we've got Jaina helping us in the fight. Hi, Jaina. Oh, this is the Jaina buff, by the way. It's a bit like a Wind Fury in that it's only there for a few seconds, but it's, yeah, it's good. Oh, also tanks. Um, tank alert, tank alert. If you're watching this and you're a tank or you're not a tank, this is important information coming right now, okay? Listen, these ads, right, help you, the NPCs, always, you see how many of them there are. There are like 10 ads, NPCs behind the boss, okay? These ads will parry haste the boss okay listen to me if you're stunned from the boss have you ever had this tank dies oh no it was parry haste because i'm the tank and i parried like the boss parried my attack oh no parry haste i died scary people overemphasize the importance of like parry haste it's not that big of a deal but anyway um when there are 10 mobs potentially getting parried in front of the boss parry haste happens frequently okay so you do not want to have this cluster of NPCs in front of the boss because they will um, trigger parries all the time, okay? They have no expertise. Um, they're level 70, I think. I'm not sure what level they are. But yeah, they'll be getting parries all the time. It's very important that the, war that the tank just keeps backpedaling and moving them so that instead of the mobs being in front, you backpedal and then the ads start um, attacking from behind, okay? You do not want the NPCs attacking from in front. You can have one or two, that's fine. Um, but it's not ideal. Ideally, it's zero. But yeah, for the same reason that melee attack from behind, you want the NPCs to also attack from behind. Okay. And that's an Etheron. Okay, great. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so once you've done all of that, talk to um, Jaina and then run to the Horde camp. If you don't need the Horde camp, you literally just... Uh, run through i'm trying to help people here as well who've maybe never been to high job before so you'll find your own way there it's quite a long trek if you're going for world first i advise maybe a riding crop a bit of a bit of a wander you know okay so let's go back to the cosmo spreadsheet and refresh ourselves with the trash breakdown so uh let's go to wave breakdown so we've killed an Etheron. nice uh, now we have the second to last set of waves. So we have waves before Kazragal and then waves um, before Asgalore. So we're on the waves before Kazragal. So we're going to have ghouls, shadow necromancers, abominations, banshees. So we have more of a um, a variation of the ads. So we've got more types of ads coming at once. They introduced the gargoyle ads, which I'll show you, and the frostworm ad. So let's let's jump into the footage and see the ads, see the trash waves. So talk to Thrall in the same way that in the Alliance base we spoke to Jaina to start the encounter. We're going to line of sight where this pillar is here. This is super sick. Uh, in the same way we um, used the, like, the tower fort to line of sight, we're going to use this pillar to line of sight. Really good, because look at this. All the mobs, regardless of if they're ranged or melt. Oh, also, if you, met, if you fail to mess up on this pillar, there's a second pillar here as well. You can use this pillar if you want or use a, a combination of the two and you'll uh, line of sight them. Healers as well, if you have a mob on you, you can line of sight as well. So here I'm on the Abomination, uh, tanking it or trying to. It's on a rogue at the moment. But uh, the reason again for the other tanks that aren't Paladins to pick up the Abominations is to avoid the stun, the knockdown on the Paladin because the Paladin's tanking so many of these mobs if they get stunned for five seconds, they're going to die very, very quickly. Again, free action potion is insanely powerful here. 
Every time there's an abomination wave, the paladin can just use a free action potion. Oh, these are the gargoyles. Let's rewind a bit. The wave two, we have gargoyles. At the back of the room here, we have gargoyles in the sky and they're coming down to the ground. So again, range player. So melee should all just be here, killing these. Range should run up, kill the guys, the gargoyles that are in the sky, get aggro and then just kite them down. You can line of sight them on this hut area and they uh, are all AoE'd very easily. They have a gargoyle strike. Nothing to worry about. Okay, and you just kill the gargoyles one by one. You've got plenty of time to kill them. The time limit before the next wave respawns is very forgiving. And like I say, you will almost always be killing the mobs and triggering the next wave by killing them instead of the timer triggering the next wave of mobs. Okay, so this is wave three. We've got some necromancers. We've got uh, the spiders. And yeah, you know, the necromancers are the ones to prioritize as a... Uh, a non paladin tank and the dps and then we have more crypt fiends more necromancers easy peasy very similar wave once more and gargoyles so kill the gargoyles the same way very straightforward again we have a necro in the back if these necros are casting shadow bolt particularly on the uh, pull when they're first coming in you basically want to have your paladin line of sight immediately because if they all get a shadow bolt off your paladin can easily die your paladin can also use their bubble get hit by all of the shadow bolts and survive and then you know figure out what they want to do afterwards which is probably line of sight again like if they fail to line of sight they've got bubble as a uh, get out of jail free card if you like so here's here's the frost worm we're trying to line of sight it down here it doesn't really work also because people aren't really line of sighting it properly but it's just a frost worm it does nothing special really it's throwing down a frost breath it's not doing anything special it's easy and then it dies easy okay next one wave seven of eight we have abominations you want to be free action potioning as the paladin tank easy peasy kill the frost worm the frost worm spawns like 30 seconds or so into the wave they these end waves are quite big. There are lots of mobs here. So just be careful. We've got Necros and we've got Banshees. Paladin drops a Consecration and Line of Sights. We have Necros here casting. We have Necros finishing their cast. Cruise our Paladin goes half HP and is able to survive. But that's the burst damage you need to survive, okay? And if he got stunned there for some reason... He would be dead. I'm assuming he is free action potioning, as you should. Okay. Forward on. Okay, we have Kazrogal. Let's jump to Cosmo's spreadsheet and go over the the uh, abilities quickly. So again, Kazrogal. Here he is. Um, you can tank him more or less where you like. If you tank him here, like in Cosmo's spreadsheet, Thrall will help attack. Again, any NPCs, make sure they're attacked from behind. I like to free action potion here because you deal more threat. If you're scared of dying as a tank, um, um, iron shield potion is the way to go because of the war stomp. Okay. He has a big cleave. Okay, um, You do not want to have him facing anybody besides the tank. Um, you want to have multiple tanks stood in front because the cleave damage is shared. Okay, So you want to have at least two tanks in front. Okay, Maybe three if you want to play it safe. Uh, the big mechanic is Mark of Kazrogal, which is a mana burn, okay? It deals, uh, it burns 3,000 mana over five seconds. And if it burns you to zero, uh, you explode for 11,000 damage in a big range. I don't know what the range is. Is it 15 yards? So basically, if you ever have 3k mana or less, preemptively move away from the raid. Assume you're going to get another mark of Kazogal debuff. It'll burn your mana and, uh, yeah, preemptively move away. Uh, there's also a cripple, which reduces uh, attack speed and strength. I don't know if this is dispellable. Normally, Cosmo will say if it's dispellable. It doesn't say here, and I, I don't know. Okay, um, you can use Shadow Res gear to uh, resist the mark of Kazogal, the mana burn, but probably don't wear any. Just get make sure you have the priest um what's it called the power the shadow protection buff 
and you'll probably be okay because you want to like the more shallow res you wear the longer the fight is extended because of the lack of damage because of the shadow res gear not having any damage stats but you know your mileage may vary but yeah i, I generally say don't use any okay next let's have a look at the video footage so let's fast forward a bit he comes with his big fat sword we engage thrall oh, okay we're on this attempt we're doing the exact tactic on the spreadsheet okay you can do it a couple of different ways you can tank him wherever you like really but this is the same as the spreadsheet it's me and the three tanks in front do i fap here i don't know i've not used any potion yet okay so we're just taking the the stomp fast forward very straightforward it's all about watching your mana okay it's all about players in the raid being able to control their mana and if you do get low 3k or less move away from the raid because you will wipe uh, like a big chunk of the raid if you the boss hits incredibly hard look at me here i get hit for uh 4.2k seven and a half k that was a crush because i'm stunned you can't block when you're stunned you can't dodge when you're stunned you can't parry when you're stunned and i don't think you can miss when you're stunned as well so um i'm taking crushing hits here that's a seven and a half k hit i'm three shot if i get crushed okay so i spike down here i take crush cleave crush scary damage okay what would be really nice maybe if uh, one of the healers uh had a bit of shadow res and resisted oh no it's a physical stun never mind ignore me okay but hots are insane you need to keep your tank hotted and you need to keep the uh, pa um ancestral fortitude or inspiration the armor buffs from priest or resto shaman up all the time it's so powerful okay and we're good to go lovely that's the boss okay let's look at the next set of waves our okay after kazo gal dies it's it, i have a smile on my face because i know we're on the last set of trash waves so there's kazo gal dead the last set of waves of mobs and then we're done with the waves Woohoo! so we have all oh, we have six shadow necromancers so a lot of casters and, and a, six abominations but the very difficult wave is wave six. So the final um, set of waves after Kazragal, before Asgalor, wave six. This is the most deadly because it's 12 casters. If your Paladin tank is going to be mowed down by Shadow Bolts or... What's the other one called? Shadow Bolts or Banshee Whales, it's going to be wave six. Okay? after Kazragal, before Azragal. Uh yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what our paladin does. Probably line of sight. T uh spoiler alert. Okay. Let's jump forward a lot. Oh, I explained tactics here, so that's why we're not pulling trash immediately. Gargoyles, we're already on uh, wave two. You, you can line of sight gargoyles here. It's not strictly required, but that's what we're doing here, okay? Again, gargoyles, I think, were spawning here. They can spawn here. They can spawn here. And they can spawn at the back. I think they can spawn down here as well. So it's basically all four corners-ish is where the gargoyles can spawn from. Okay. We're on wave three. Oh, these are the first infernals we see. Um, they're a bit... Like, the infernals are kind of annoying to tank because, like, oh, they're just a bit slow. They don't really do much damage on the tank, so your rage isn't very high. They're very spread out, so you don't just pick them up. You have to pick them up one by one by one. Lots of traveling in between, and if damage dealers in your raid are doing their job, they're attacking them, so they're picking up threat every now and then. Okay, so wave four, we have infernals that are dropping down, as well as these fell stalkers. Now, paladin tanks, you are going to be mana burned. Yay! So, front load your threat and your consecrations because 10, 20 seconds later, you're going to be out of mana. So, cruise, the paladin tank is already, you know, a quarter mana down. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm, I think this might may have changed on the PTR. Maybe they mana burn the tank a little bit more. I don't know. Or maybe we just killed them super quickly. But just be careful with the mana. 
a wave five so we're one wave away from this really scary wave although this wave looks fairly scary we have um fell stalkers mana burning you can see the cast there we have necros using their shadow ball bolt and we have abominations looking to stun the paladin so action stations definitely be fapping here and mow them all down jump onto the next wave this is the scariest thing to see in a wave okay look at these 12 caster mobs it's like something out of jaws okay so they're casting so they're a bit staggered here so that's good so they're all casting slightly offset which is good um cruise oh look our paladin tank died who could have seen this coming i i forgot he died this was recorded like 5th of december <laughs> he gets cr'd okay he gets buffed and we continue um but yeah this is the the scary part okay if we didn't have a quick cr we could have wiped and we're doing the whole wave restarting again from the last boss but we pull it off well i'm kind of glad that cruz died there because it stresses my point and it shows that it is a difficult wave and then we have wave seven which will have us running around yes infernals and Crypt Fiends at the beginning, Fellstalkers, Mana Burning at the entrance, and just a sprinkle of uh, Infernals throughout the uh, area, the room. Now, this is just a big, this is just a big wave of ads. We've got Fellstalkers, we've got Necros, we've got everything here, basically. And, yeah. I think you can use most two-minute cooldowns here. What time are we? We're one hour, four minutes. And then by the time we kill it all, the boss is here, one minute, six minutes. Okay, so you can maybe get away with using two minute cooldowns on that last wave. Okay, so we have Asgalor. Now, Asgalor is one of the fights that hits very hard on the tank. Healing is kind of stressed. And um, I am not afraid as a tank to burn last stand and shield wall. I don't care if I have last stand or shield wall ready for Archimonde because Archimonde is easy to survive in comparison to Asgalor, okay? And if I die on Archimonde, we wipe and we go again. If I die on Asgalor, we do another 20 minutes of trash. No, thank you. That's how people quit TBC Classic. <laughs> High gel trash waves. Okay, so let's pause quickly. Let's have a look at Cosmo's uh, very amazing uh, spreadsheet. Thank you, Cosmo. We have a cleave, which is a standard cleave. Knockback. There's no knockback. Um, there's a doom. So this is a doom debuff, which is on a random player, not the tank. So a random player will get a doom debuff. You want to run over towards Thrall. Well, you can run them over to either direction. So here... Um, in Cosmo's uh, strategy, we're killing them over here with the Torn NPCs. You can also, if you get their Doom debuff, run over to Thrall and Thrall will kill the demon. So what happens is you have a Doom debuff that lasts 20 seconds. When the Doom debuff ends after the 20 second duration, you will instantly die and a demon will spawn. And you, the tank, and a couple of DPS kill the demon. Um, you can kill them over here where the Tauren NPCs are, or when you have the Doom, you can go over to Thrall and kill it with Thrall. That's the Doom debuff. Also, you can Soulstone the person who has the Doom debuff, so when they die, they can uh, resurrect. Howl of Asgalore is a zone-wide, I think, AoE silence for five seconds. So this is why the tank can easily die, because there are going to be no casts on the tank for, for, for five seconds. You can use a neck from Blood Furnace Heroic or from Jewel Crafting or from Fathom Lord Tidewalker. Morogrim Tidewalker, sorry. Um, to reduce the silence duration if you want to. As well as any Shadow Res if you really want to. Hots, again, are insane because of the lack of casts going on the tank. Again, tanks get ready to use Nightmare Seed, Iron Shield Potion or, or Health Stone um, and cooldowns, okay? And then there's a rain of fire spawning on a random player. Melee in particular have to be quick to dodge. And uh, that's it. Let's jump back to the raid footage. So we're getting a lust. I've got a iron shield potion up. We have NPCs attacking more or less from behind. I hope no one's getting parries there. 
and we start downing the boss. We have somebody here. I think the Shadow Priest or someone has the Doom debuff. You can't see it from my combat log, but they're going to die. Someone here is going to die soon in the raid um, frame. And oh, there's the silence, the raid wide silence. Some people melee are stood in the Reign of Fire. There's the Doom guard that's been spawned from the Doom debuff. It's being tanked. The tank's being healed. And Thrall is helping to kill it. Nice job. And then it's just tank and spank and survive the silence. That's all it is. If you get the Doom debuff, run over to an NPC. In this case, it's Thrall. Have it be tanked by Paladin. Have a couple of healers heal the Paladin tank. And then everyone needs to be so i'm the the tank is the most important person in the raid if i die it's an absolute wipe anyone else in the raid dies it's not necessarily a wipe so we go down here i've already used last stand do i need to use shield wall i use shield wall preemptively because i know i don't need it for kazragar uh, for um, archimond which is next and i'm so happy when we get to this stage because i know we are done with the the trash waves we didn't wipe once easy peasy okay we wiped once on um our command let's quickly go to um cosmo's spreadsheet our command i love cosmo i love his spreadsheet but one thing i would say is don't tank ilden here tank ilda uh, our command here so don't know how I can easily do this, but like instead of this being here, I would move everything here. The reason being, if you get um, air bursted and knocked into the sky, um, there's a chance that you get knocked towards the world tree. There's an aura. Anytime, I don't know if it's quite this big, it might be like closer to the water. But if you're close to the tree, you have a 30 second debuff, which means you can't cast any spells, physical or magic, is my understanding. I don't get the debuff, so I don't really experience it. But if you have this, it's like you're being dead for 30 seconds. You can't do anything. So the only addition I would make is move the whole raid more central in this area, okay? Um, so Airburst has a 10-yard range. It's not mentioned here, but I'm pretty sure it's 10 yards. So the raid wants to be spread because Airburst will knock one player up in the sky and off to uh, like one direction kind of thing. And you only want one person to be Airbursted at a time. Because if it's the, you know, if it's the Paladin healer, that's a big deal. But if it's the Paladin healer and a Moonkin or something, or Paladin healer and a Shaman, you know, you've taken out your... You know, your Moonkin could potentially be decursing and your Paladin healer is obviously laying down some backbone heals on the tank and that can get a bit dicey as well as just loss of damage and everything else. So you want to be 10 yards spread, but at the same time, there's a fear that you want to be within range of your Tremor Totem. So having five Shamans is insanely good here. Please try and have five Shamans. If you don't have five Shamans in your raid, I feel sorry for you. It's still doable, but you just have to be a little bit better at the game than all the other raids with five Shamans because Tremor Totem's OP. So you want to be 10 yards away so you don't get air bursted multiple people at once, but close enough that you're all within range of your Tremor Totem, okay? You can make a weak aura maybe for Tremor Totem and just make sure you're in range all the time. And just, you know, the goal of Asgalor, uh, sorry, the goal of Archimond is survival. It's, in my opinion, the most survival-focused encounter in the entirety of World of Warcraft because um, of this. Let me just sh shrug down. Um, if anyone dies, Archimond will cast one of three variations of Soul Charged. Depends on what class dies. Don't worry about the specifics. Just know that if anyone dies, it's a problem. Watch your feet. Um, be quick with the curses and keep the tank alive. Okay, so um, there are several, again, one of three variations of Soul Charge. One of them will be 7k damage on the entire raid. That can lead to more wipes and thus more soul charges. Another one can be, I think, a knockdown, which will stop all casts. And I think another one is... Can't remember. 
Um, but yeah, if anyone dies, it can very easily start a domino effect because it's easy for more people to die and you just, you know, you snowball into a wipe. So there's also a um, grip of, a, of the Legion, which deals a shed load of damage um, over five minutes. So decurse it immediately because you want everyone to be full HP all the time because of the um, Doom Fire. So this is a fire which you'll see in a second on the video. Um, it has quite a large range and you'll get the debuff and it ticks for a lot of damage. So if you get the fire debuff, it sucks because you're going to be sucking heals from the healers and that means it won't be on the tank and it means that uh, it's awkward. Okay, let's just cut into the video and I'll be able to explain myself a bit better perhaps. So first of all, you want your arms warrior to ninja pull the boss. Oh wait. No, no, you don't. Anyway, uh, it's so easy, we still kill it. So start with your arms warrior ninja pulling. And then I'm pulling the boss immediately away from the world tree, getting him into position. We have all of our shamans marked. So we have square. Uh, we have... Well, skull just got tombed up, got um, air bursted up. So marking your shamans is really good. Um, particularly if the shamans are dropping their totems where they are and they're going to redo them wherever they are so that you can just instead of trying to find the totem you can just know that my shaman is marked star i'm always going to be around star but not 10 yards close to star because of the air burst okay tanking wise it's fairly straightforward he can't crush so but he still hits hard like he can hit like this there's a seven and a half k swing followed by a five and a half k swing but you're the only tank so the majority of the heals are going straight into you so he hits hard, but he's not hitting anybody else hard, you know? It's the fire that hits other people hard. So he's casting air burst. People are being knocked into the sky. Oh, I should mention as well, you get the tier earlier. Um, tier of the goddess. Uh, let's back it up. I'm just doing some Photoshop, showing people what to do. Dun, 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 dun. Is it worth me showing this? This is going to take like 10 minutes to try and find the right npc so when you're running down there'll be your npc here torinda whisperwind on the mount she's fairly easy to spot as you're on your way to archimond talk to her and she'll give you a tear of the goddess when you get knocked into the air when you're getting low um you know expect to take like try and take a little bit of full damage if you are full hp just to play it safe you don't want to be too low use your tear and then be like, oh, I just took all the fall damage because I used it too late. You'd rather use it early and take a bit of fall damage than too late and take full fall damage. Okay. Um, so you see the fire spawning. The fire will um, chase a specific person for about five seconds or so and then chase somebody else. What you don't want to do is, bring up my snip tool, is like, let's say that the uh, like it's, it's on star. Okay. So the fire goes, like let's say it spawns on star. Okay, what Star doesn't want to do is run like this because all of a sudden there's fire all the way over here. And if a melee gets knocked up in the air and he's on this side of the fire, he then has to run around and then find his position again. All the while, he could be within 10 yards of people and air burst them. What you want to do is, if you get hit by the, uh, the flame, is run out get hit by the flame run out get hit by the flame run out get hit by the flame run out hit by the flame run out this way um there's always a channel to go back into the boss the worst case scenario is you do a half circle here you do a half circle there and like melee can't get back into the boss or ranged can't get within range of the boss oh sorry that windows noise was so loud uh, the fire does so much damage with the uh, debuff. So it's very uh, grief on the raid if you're taking fire damage. You really need, like, obviously as a pro gamer, I avoid that fire damage insta. Fire spawns right next to me. Instantly sidestep. Okay, it didn't spawn right on top of me, but whatever. And this guy, evocation. Oh, look. He got hit by the fire debuff. Oh, look. He's now... I don't mean to call, call out this guy. Oh, he ice-blocked it. 
Okay, fine. Mage is OP. But there's somebody else here, surely. Like, this guy has a 5 debuff. Like, you're just consistently requiring heals to keep you alive. Also, in conjunction with any of the other mechanics, like, if you get airbursted and you have a fire debuff, you're like, you get airbursted in the sky. You're taking ticks of fire damage whilst you're in the sky. If you're a rogue, you're not healing yourself. And then you come down, you use your tears of the goddess, you take a little bit of fall damage, half your HP was just taken because of the doomfire debuff. And you take 10% of your damage because of the fall damage. And, oh look, the boss has just done his um, grip the legion on you and you have the curse. Now you're dead. Guess what? It would have been much easier if you just stopped doing damage, maybe moved out of melee range for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds. It doesn't matter. It's not a damage fight at all. It's a survival fight. The rogue can literally be stood in the back of the raid, hands up, legs on the table, and just saying, you know, there's fire near the boss. I don't want to attack it. And just take little damage, not get hit by any of the fire, and then get knocked into the air and, you know, be safe. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you really do want to focus survival on everything else. Like, when this fight was really hard on buffed private servers, like, you'd literally say either we take no melee on progress kills, or melee just really need to just not attack the boss full time. Because the fire is just so painful. But it's fairly easy on classic. So, you know, you can get away with it. You can have three or four people with the fire debuff, but it's not good practice and it will stress the healers. Um, alternatively, if you are having struggles and you're not having people easily avoid the fire, you can just bring more healers because the, dam the damage requirement is low. The damage here, it's almost like a soft enrage in the fact that you just need to survive like three minutes and you've killed the boss. So the more damage you bring, the less duration the fight is, obviously. So you only have to play well for three minutes instead of bring more healers and play well for four minutes. One thing I will also mention is the fear. As a warrior, you can stance stance the fear or, again, use the tremor totem like everyone else or get a fear ward. But, again, a big thing, if you're dying to the fire here or struggling with the fire, listen. I'm getting your attention, guys. Listen. This is big information here regarding Archimonde. So you see the fear um, is coming off cooldown in 10 seconds. He doesn't fear instantly once it's off cooldown. He'll think about it a bit maybe and then use the fear. So when fear is on five seconds left, I will say on Discord, fear cooldown five seconds and then fear off cooldown. When you are told that fear is off cooldown, I don't care who or what you're doing. Your main priority is be be as far away as you can from fire normally when fire spawns next to you let's say that um you've just come back from being air bursted and you're running back to uh, your spot near your shaman and you're doing your damage or your healing cool and there's just a fire sat next to you that was there before you got there cool it's off to the side and that fire isn't moving you're safe the problem is when he casts his fear like he just has you're not instantly breaking the fear with a tremor. Tremor can take a second or two to tick. In a couple of seconds, you've moved five yards in that direction. That's where the fire is. You now have a fire debuff. When fire is five seconds off cooldown, just move a little bit more away from the fire. Because if you are then feared for that short duration into the fire, you're screwed. If the whole raid has the mentality of, I'm just going to squeeze out one more Starfire. I'm just going to squeeze out one more Shadow Bolt. You're going to have like 30% or more fire debuffs in the raid. And that's really going to hurt you getting a smooth kill. And again, it's all about people being safe. Because if one person dies, the whole raid can just wipe. You can get knocked down. Everyone stops their cast. The heals stop on the tank. People, you know, who are getting a healing wave because they have the fire debuff. Oh, it got cancelled. Oh, that person died. Now we have another um, soul charge. Oh, it's 7k damage on the raid. Oh, we had five people die. Guess what? If you have five people die or multiple people die at once, you have back-to-back -back soul charges. So if two people die, you'll get one soul charge and then a second soul charge. So it just compounds and it gets messy very quickly. On the plus side, our command has less HP than Gruul. And you also kill him or finished encounter at 10% HP. So 
the risk is people think that this is like a burst do lots of damage kill him quickly fight and to a small degree that's true but to a larger degree it's about survival you'd rather one shot him and do less damage typically more particularly on a progress kill than like try and deal extra damage moonkins um decurse you can decurse you need to decurse um hybrid classes if you get knocked into the air and you have a fire debuff and you're miles away out of healing range and you're paladin self heal then run back to the raid if you're moonkin self heal run back to the raid you don't want to just oh i got knocked back with a fire debuff i'm knocked away from the raid in the air i use my uh tier of the goddess i'm safe but now i now i have a 10 second journey to get back to reality where the raid is and i'm running back i've got a nice little fire debuff oh and it killed me but i'm an enhanced shaman i could have healed myself nope I don't heal myself. I just die instead. And because of the boss mechanics, now there's a soul charge, 7k damage to the entire raid and the raid wipes. All because Enhancement Shaman didn't hybrid heal. Moonkins, like if you have a, um, a sticky situation as a Moonkin, I remember doing this back in the day. I played a bit of Moonkin. Um, just decurse people, decurse people. Uh, do a couple of Starfires um throw a th few uh, regrowths do a few more decurses you're not there to do damage you're there to kill the boss anyway that's my rant over i hope you've enjoyed this video sorry if it's been really long um if you enjoyed it please thumbs up let youtube know that this video is worth watching and worth being put into the recommendation section of other people so more people can find it that's all i ask for if you enjoyed the video please help me out if i've been able to help you out subscribe if you want more information uh, more information if you want more videos from me you can pr press the bell icon if you want to have a notification um, i do plan to make more tier 6 content and i'm doing a lot of gdkps currently and i'd really like to streamline the content so not net well if we do speedruns as a guild i'd like to do some speedrun content as well and like guides for that but also how to easily kill the bosses and like i play five level 70s at the moment so hopefully six soon as a healer and yeah i'd like to bring lots of content regarding tier six and over into sunwell and wrath of the lich king and beyond so if that if you like what you see hopefully there's more coming in the future and this was just a really rushed video my computer crashed five times this morning so i had very limited time to put this together big shout out to cosmo for the spreadsheet it's been wonderful everything will be linked in the description thanks for watching and good luck in tier six hopefully you get some glaives and good loot and yeah best of best of luck bye